Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. This week we are presenting Rapunzel, a classic fairy tale retold by Daniel Hines. Thanks! Enjoy the episode! Rapunzel Once upon a time, in a lonely field, in a lonely corner of a lonely kingdom, there lived a lonely girl. She was lonely because she was a prisoner. Lucky for her, she wasn't kept in a dank cell with iron bars, and even luckier still, she wasn't in a dungeon with squeaking and scritching rats. No, her prison was a gentle kiss as far as prisons went. It was a round room at the tippity-top of a slender tower, one that rose higher than most trees. A slender spear of white marble that thrust at the sky and cast its shadow over the lush green grass of the fields below. It had a feather bed on an iron frame for sleeping, a fireplace for warmth and cooking, a chamber pot for when nature called, and even a giant arched window that looked out towards the sunset. But, for all that, it was still a prison. There was no entrance, no exit, no escape. The girl only ever talked to one person, her captor, the witch an old and bent-backed woman with spotted, wrinkled hands and eyes red as fire. Every other day or so, the witch would ride up to the tower on her silver horse and call up. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, so youthful, so fair. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, please let down your hair. Now, that rhyme may seem strange, but that's only because there's two things you don't know. The first is that Rapunzel was the lonely girl's name. The second is that Rapunzel's hair was so long and thick that it stretched from the tower window all the way to its base. And when the witch would call up that rhyme, Rapunzel would walk to the window and send all of her hair flowing to the ground in a soft and wavy waterfall. And the witch would climb it like a rope. How are you, my dear? The witch would ask when she climbed through the tower window with a bag of food for Rapunzel. I'm fine, said Rapunzel, who had long ago given up on fighting. The witch looked old, but she had powerful magic. Besides, Rapunzel had been a prisoner in the tower for so long that she barely knew any other life. I've brought you some bread and cheese and a bit of salt and sugar, said the witch, dropping the bag to the floor. Make sure you eat it all. She picked up Rapunzel's hair with one crooked hand and ran her fingers through it. She smelled of old smoke and onions, and Rapunzel wrinkled her nose. The witch continued to pet her hair and cooed. So long, so lovely. Soon it will be long enough for my spell and we can cut it. And then you'll let me go? The witch laughed, an ugly cackle that sounded like she'd swallowed a crow. Let you go? This is your home, girl. Best you just accept that. The witch took Rapunzel's hair in her hands and leaned back out the window. I'll be back in a few days, my dear. Eat up. I need you nice and healthy. She slid down the silky hair like a rope. Rapunzel watched her mount her silver horse and ride into the distance. With a sigh, Rapunzel pulled out some bread and cheese and began to nibble. Like most afternoons, she stood at the window, watching the distant trees dance in the breeze, watching the waves of wind bend the lush green grass, and most of all, watching the people walk and ride down the trail in the hazy distance. Where are they going? Where are they coming from? It seemed silly to Rapunzel. Half the people were coming from the left and going to the right. The other half were coming from the right and going to the left. No one was happy where they were, it seemed. Well, Rapunzel could relate. Way down there, people look as small as I feel. Way up here, I'm kept away from anything real. But one day I'm gonna get free. Grass 
grass is always greener in the distance. People look so lovely from afar. I know there must be more to this existence. I know I'm made to shine like a star. There must be sweeter air. Way, way down there. Rapunzel's song spilled out of her window and echoed across the fields. It wasn't loud enough to reach the distant trail, but it was loud enough to reach the ears of a young man riding through the woods nearby. More than a young man, he was a young prince, one who had slipped away from his royal guards to take a quiet ride among the trees. When he heard Rapunzel's voice, he halted his horse and cocked his head, trying to pick it out from among the whistles of birds and babbling streams. You hear that, boy? He whispered to his horse. It's a girl, and she sounds sad. Do you think we should go check it out? (coughs) Ah, don't be so lazy. Maybe she needs help. (coughs) All right, let's go. (coughs) The prince soon came to the base of the tower and could just barely make out Rapunzel high above, singing into the bright blue sky. He stood and listened for a long time, enchanted by the beauty of her voice. Only when the sun set and Rapunzel left the window did he ride home to his castle. For the rest of the night, he couldn't get Rapunzel off his mind. Even when he closed his eyes to sleep, he heard her singing in his dreams. The next day, he couldn't help but return to her tower. Again, he slipped from the woods and listened and watched from afar, not daring to interrupt as the beautiful, sad songs drifted from the tower window so high above. That night, too, he couldn't get it out of his mind. And the next day, he went again. And the day after that as well and the day after that. Finally, on the seventh day, he couldn't help himself. When Rapunzel's voice drifted down from the sky, the prince answered it with his own. Way Way up there, there. she sings so sad, but so sweet. Way down here, I wonder if we will meet. One day, I'm gonna ask her, climb the tower and find out for sure. One day, I'll do more than just stare. I'll see how she's living way up there. grass is always greener in the distance. People look so lovely from afar. I know there must be more to this existence. I know I'm made to shine like a star. There must be sweeter air. Way, way up down there. You can hear me? Uh, I mean, uh, you can hear me? Yes. What are you doing down there? I was riding through the forest and I heard you singing. I came back to listen and I guess I started singing too. What are you doing up there? I'm trapped. A witch put me here so she could make me grow my hair for some spell. You should run in case she comes back. A witch? The prince drew a short sword from his belt with a steely ring. My father doesn't allow witches in the kingdom, and he definitely doesn't allow anyone to take prisoners. Where's the door? I'll come break you out. There's no door, only this, said Rapunzel, and let her hair fall free from the window. By the gods, what long hair you have, said the prince, brushing his hands through the longest strands that were dancing with the grass. She uses it like a rope for climbing up and down. But how do you get down? I don't. She never lets me. Never? The prince shook his head. I'll return to my father's castle and fetch a rope. I'll be back tomorrow and we will set you free. Wait, 
Your father's castle? Who are you? I'm the prince. My father rules over the entire kingdom, including this tower and your evil witch, and I swear we will free you from your prison. With that, he swung into the saddle and, with a last salute to Rapunzel in her tower, rode hard for his home. Good luck, called Rapunzel as he disappeared into the distance. Please come back. The next morning, Rapunzel woke to the witch calling for her. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, so youthful, so fair. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, please let down your hair. When the witch finished her climb, Rapunzel was surprised to see she had brought nothing to eat, nothing to drink. In fact, all that the witch had brought was a dark and stormy look and a cruel, crooked grin. So, I see you've had a visitor. Rapunzel's body went cold, her heart beating in her chest like a frightened bird trying to fly away. I, what? There's a... The witch smashed her wrinkled fist against the stone wall. Sparks leapt out and the rocks scorched and blackened. Ragged stone chips broke free and rained to the floor. Don't bother to deny it. I've seen the prince lurking out there all week, listening to your silly songs, no doubt dreaming of being the hero who saves the fair maiden and defeats the witch. Well, my little Rapunzel, life isn't like your stories. You're no princess, and your prince won't be defeating the wicked witch. When he comes back tomorrow with his little rope, it will be the last thing he ever does. Rapunzel cowered in the corner of the tower, afraid of the witch and what she might do. Please, no! It's too late for that. Your hair is long enough for my spell. Tomorrow is the day, and no silly prince will be interfering. (laughs) The witch roughly grabbed Rapunzel's hair and climbed down from the tower. Rapunzel watched her mount her silver horse and disappear into the night. For a time afterward, she was frozen by fright. The spell would be ready tomorrow? What would that mean? And even worse, the witch was going to attack the prince who only wanted to help. Rapunzel knew she couldn't let that happen. But what can I do? There's no way out except my hair, and I can't very well climb down my own hair. Or could I? Rapunzel shuffled over to the blackened wall the witch had struck in her fury. With her soft hands, she dug into the stone chips until she found what she was looking for, a crooked gray piece of rock, one edge flat and jaggedly sharp. She brought it up to her neck, hands trembling. I won't be used as a spell, and no prince will fall trying to rescue me. It's clear now that I must escape this tower tonight or be doomed forever. She grabbed her hair and pulled it into a tight ponytail by her neck. With the other hand, she dragged the jagged stone back and forth, sawing through her thick and wavy locks until they fell free, slithering to the floor. Not so magic after all, Rapunzel said, pulling her fingers through her new short and crudely cut hair. But still, good enough to escape this prison for good. Rapunzel took her hair and twisted it into a rough rope. One end she tied to the cold iron leg of her bed, the other she threw from the window into the moonless night. Goodbye, little prison, she said, and slipped through the window, climbing down the tower on a rope of her own hair, moving carefully, hand over delicate hand. Finally, when she thought she couldn't hold on anymore, her feet hit the lush grass and sank into her ankles. It was soft and sweet, and nothing had ever felt so good. Deliriously happy to finally be free of the tower, Rapunzel sank to her knees and cried tears of joy. Free! I'm free! Still crying and laughing with happiness, she turned and ran, heading for the distant trail and the village she knew must lay somewhere beyond. The next morning, the prince approached the tower and slid off his horse. He had his sword on his belt and a long rope wound about his waist. Ah, she is ready for me, he said when he spied Rapunzel's hair hanging down from the window. My lady, I am coming. He climbed the rope quickly, pulling himself through the window and into the round room beyond. No! It can't be! The hair wasn't attached to the girl, it was tied to the leg of the bed. And inside the room was not the fair lady with her long wavy hair, but an ancient crone with a humped back, spotted and wrinkled hands, and bright eyes, red as fire. 
Hello, my prince, the witch croaked. She raised a hand and mumbled a spell, and the rope around the prince's body started to writhe and wiggle like a snake. He bellowed and tried to pull it off his body, but it was too late, too late. It coiled round and round him, pinning his arms to his side and covering his mouth completely, leaving him struggling and mute and helpless. So nice of you to join me. (laughs) Rapunzel ran into the first small village she saw and began to yell. Help! Help! Witch and black magic! Spells and sorcery! The prince is in danger! The villagers stopped their work and crowded around, yelling questions and eyeing the strange girl with the raggedly cut hair suspiciously. What do you mean the prince is in danger? We just saw him not an hour ago. You what? asked Rapunzel. Was she too late? He came riding through fast as anything. He had a long rope round his body like he was going climbing, but he seemed healthy enough. The crowd all yelled agreement. No, he was going to save me from the witch's tower, but I got free myself. He's riding into a trap. She's expecting him. What? What can we do? Rapunzel looked around the small village with dismay. There was nothing but small wooden homes, wagons piled high with hay, and chickens pecking in the dirt. What could they do? It seemed hopeless, but Rapunzel couldn't leave the prince, not when he was so willing to help her. She had to try, even if it meant going back to the tower she had just escaped. But what to do? Then she got an idea. Everyone, come with me. The prince slumped over onto his side, gasping weakly for air as his rope tightened about his chest, forcing the breath from his lungs. You feel that, my prince? whispered the witch. The pain in your chest, slouching through your body like a hungry snake? It's your punishment for trying to free my beautiful Rapunzel. It's your prison, sweet prince, and there's nothing you can do. Suddenly, The hair out the window stretched taut. Someone was climbing. Who dares disturb me? The witch crossed to the window and peeked down, only to see Rapunzel clinging to the rope of hair just outside the window. (laughs) You've returned to save the prince, said the witch, grabbing Rapunzel by the arms and dragging her into the room. You foolish girl, there's nothing you can do. Behold! Leaving Rapunzel stunned on the floor, the witch untied the hair from the bed leg and wound it around her body, leaving the ends stretched across her open hands, the wavy strands curling about her fingers. And now you will see the magic contained in the uncut hair of an innocent. Pay close attention, my prince, because it will be the last thing you see. No, yelled Rapunzel. You have my hair. Just let us go. Never, yelled the witch and lashed out with her magic. Rapunzel was thrown across the room and sent sprawling into the prince, tangling and crashing to the ground on top of him. Now behold my power! The witch lifted the hair high and began to chant a spell, words misting from her mouth like a dark cloud that hung above her head and flickered with internal lightning. Youthful hair, uncut and pure, strands of beauty severed sure. As the witch chanted the spell, Rapunzel tugged weakly at the enchanted rope binding the prince. I can't get it off! I can't get it off! Sword! Choked out the prince, his face turning a deep plum purple. Take my ears and peel them back, like onion raw or nail gone black. Rapunzel jerked the prince's sword from its sheath on his belt. She laid the razor-sharp edge against the winding, slithering rope and began to saw back and forth. Where the steel cut through, the magic bled out of the rope and the prince drew a giant, desperate breath. The hump on the witch's back was shrinking, the spots and lines fading from her eyes. In her hands, Rapunzel's hair was turning gray and frail as the witch leached the youth from the wavy strands. Even worse, Rapunzel could see her own hands growing older, spots dotting her skin. The witch wasn't just stealing the youth from the hair, she was stealing it from Rapunzel. Trust by tresses, locked by locks, flip the glass and back the clocks. The prince freed, Rapunzel turned to the witch, so caught up in her spell she didn't even see the young girl creeping up behind her, sword raised. Steal the prince's final breath and turn Rapunzel's life to... No! The witch's spell turned into a scream of despair as Rapunzel brought down the sword. 
The razor-sharp steel cut through the hair in the witch's hand, sending stray strands flying everywhere, and the witch's spell broke with a clap of thunder that echoed overwhelmingly through the tower and out over the fields beyond. Rapunzel threw down the sword and helped the prince to his feet. Come on, time to go! My spell! My youth! cried the witch. Even as Rapunzel watched, the lines and spots returned, the witch's back bending and crumpling. Looking at her own hands, Rapunzel was relieved to see the lines and spots on her own skin disappearing. She dragged the prince to the window. <coughs> no rope, <coughs> he coughed. Just trust me. <laughs> you fool! You've cut the rope and you've cut the hair. Your prince can't save you. You're trapped in here with me. No, you'll never keep me prisoner again. I'm stronger than you and I can rescue myself. Rapunzel grabbed the prince around the waist and stood on the sill of the window, leaning out into space. No, you can't! You don't tell me what to do. Not ever again! The prince in her arms, Rapunzel, jumped. The witch cried out and tried to grab at Rapunzel with her gnarled hands, but she only managed to tear free a piece of the girl's dress. Rapunzel and the prince fell, down and down and down. They fell for what felt like years, the rushing wind of their descent plucking at their clothes and roaring over their ears. They fell and fell and fell, and finally sank into something warm and fragrant and much, much softer than the ground. A moment later, they were pulled free by a dozen pairs of strong hands. You did it! You've rescued the prince! Spitting some straw from her mouth, Rapunzel smiled widely. The villagers had followed her plan perfectly, piling all their hay under the tower window. It wasn't time to celebrate yet, though. The fire! Now! The villager nodded and signaled to the others. Torches flew, and soon the hay was a blazing bonfire. Let's see her jump into that, the villager said happily. Careful, said Rapunzel. Even without a way to jump, the tower won't hold her for long. It doesn't have to, <coughs> coughed the prince giving Rapunzel a weak smile and pointing into the distance. Look, my father's army. Rapunzel turned to follow the prince's finger, and she let out a cry of delight. There in the distance, thundering out of the woods, was the royal army. Knights in gleaming silvered plate, arches with bows as tall as themselves, and great catapults with boulders at the ready. They'll bring this tower down around her. The witch is done. Rapunzel's heart soared. Without pausing to think, she leaned down and gave the prince a kiss. Oh, I'm so happy. Me too, he said, blushing. He arched his back and winced at the crisscross of bruises where the magic rope bound him. Where will you go now? I, uh, I don't know. I've only ever lived in the tower. I have no other home. Well, said the prince, rubbing at the back of his neck. Maybe you'd like to come stay at the castle as, um, my guest? It's the least I can do. You save my life. It turns out, Rapunzel liked that idea very much. They lingered just long enough to watch the king's army bury the witch in fire and stone, and then they mounted the prince's horse together and started back towards the castle. Over the next several years, Rapunzel learned all about the world that she had been kept away from. She explored first the castle, and then the kingdom, and then the world, ranging far and wide to see all there was to see. Of course, the prince was her constant companion, and it was many a day on the road that they could be heard for miles, singing together. The End Thanks for listening! 